judging from how my voice sounds now, there's probably some people who kind of have wondered, so what's the deal? Did you sing? No, because I have a tin ear. When I hear sound, it is, I'm, I'm not, I have an extremely hard time matching what I'm hearing. Um, now also when I was extremely young, uh, I almost died of crib death. So they had to open my neck and put a tube into my neck as a little tiny baby. So my voice has always been a little odd sounding for my, uh, uh, yeah, just, uh, yeah. So I was never a singer. The thing is, though, because of the uh, place that I grew up, being working poor, we couldn't afford instruments in a music room at our school, so all we could do was learn singing. And uh, so at one point, well, you know, when you get loosely interested in doing some music or something like that, it was in my 20s studying martial arts, and uh, my martial arts instructor had been one of those guys from way back in the day who had given his... Uh, given it a try in the 60s and 70s at, at having like the multi, multi-racial funk band and uh, they got big in Japan apparently uh, as the saying goes back in the day but uh, what it was is that at some point something came up about performance and things like that and he said okay so you want to be famous then and I'm like well I don't really know and then, then he, it, it was real weird because he didn't really he did this but he didn't do quite like this I was, no, you want to be famous. He's telling me. If, you're, if you want to be a singer or performer, the point is you want to be famous. And so I was like, okay, I'll, granted, I guess if I want to be a performer, I want to be famous. Then he goes, then you better bring the house down every goddamn night or don't waste the audience's time and money. And I was like, oh, now he met Frank Sinatra. Like he was in that realm of people. And so it's like he had seen some of the greatest performers of his time. So he was like, don't waste the audience's goddamn time if you're not going to bring the house down. That was how he put it. I'll never forget that. Because when I did see people who were epic, like uh, Sharon Jones and the Dap Kings came to Eugene, Oregon, and the show was amazing. And... There were people I saw at that show, like this one Samoan girl got brought on stage and, uh, and she, for, it was years later, I saw her around, hey doc, I saw her around and, uh, and, and we, we talked about that show, you know, and, uh, and it was so funny. She was having the time of her life. She's the big Samoan girl up there and all the other girls there in their fancy outfits and drunk. She's the sober one. Because, of course, she's a good Samoan girl, so she's not drunk in public like that. And it was just so adorable. It was, and we were talking about how epic that show was. And that's the point. Bring the house down every single time. Video game people are in the business of entertainment. And now with the complaints that are being made about Pal World, it's like, no, a lot of you guys need to stop talking like that. You didn't bring the house down. You didn't entertain people. That's what it was. You're just mad because you can't bring the house down. So, I, I don't know. It's just, you know, I don't, I don't do that kind of work. You know, that, it, it sounds like it's incredibly difficult to make an epic video game that people remember for decades. That that would be very difficult. But it's like, don't complain if the game you made didn't entertain people at all. It's just that kind of thing. If, when you're in entertainment, that's the point. You shoot for the stars and nothing less because you've got to land on the moon. And the crowd is there with you. That you're, you're bringing the crowd to the moon every night at least. So, yeah. All right. Later.